Hey, Marjorie here. Are you ready to learn about kombucha and why this is something that's healthy for both our bones and overall health? Well, if so, you are in the right place because our special guest today is Hannah Crum. And Hannah is also known as the Kombucha Mama. And she pioneered Kombucha Camp, an educational workshop back in 2004 out of her small Los Angeles kitchen. Along with her husband, Alice Liguori, they created the top educational site with a mission to change the world one gut at a time by providing quality information, cultures, and customer support. And through Kombucha Camp's videos, blog posts, online support communities, and award-winning Amazon bestseller, The Big Book of Kombucha, they serve as mentors and leading experts in kombucha to millions of kombucha lovers from all corners of the earth. Hannah is a popular speaker about kombucha, fermentation, and bacterio sapiens. Hannah frequently tours and can be found speaking at corporate and health conferences, fermentation festivals, and events throughout the United States and abroad. And as an extension of Hannah and Alex's mission, they also co-founded Kombucha Brewers International in 2014 to unite and advocate for the commercial kombucha bottling industry worldwide. And in today's talk, we really go into what kombucha is, how it's made, and the health benefits. So this talk is filled with lots of great information, so stay tuned. Welcome, Hannah. I'm really thrilled to have you on the podcast because this is a topic a lot of people just really don't know about, and there's so much confusion. So yay, I'm psyched to clear this up and really, really go over the benefits of this. So welcome. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited to share all about kombucha. I have a real love and passion for it. And so I'm eager to clear the air and let everybody know that well, I think of myself as the ambassador and I'm here to let you know, she means you no harm. She means you a world of good. Um, but so maybe let's start with what is kombucha? Exactly. Because a lot know. of people don't really know what it is. They hear the term and is it good for me? Is it not good for me? Is it full of sugar? There's just so much different. There's just a lot of different information. So yay, we're clearing it up. So yes, let's start out. What? Tell us what it is. <laughs> In its simplest form, kombucha is fermented tea, right? So we know fermented milk could be yogurt, could be kefir. We know fermented grapes are wine. Fermented hops is, is beer, fermented barley. We know fermented cabbage is sauerkraut, right? So kombucha is a fermented tea. It's made with tea and sugar, but the sugar is fermented. And so that means that that sucrose, which is that disaccharide of both the fructose and glucose molecule bonded together that gets broken in the fermentation process. What happens is then the bacteria and yeast eat that and convert that into healthy acids. And so even when you're looking at like a bottle of kombucha at the store and you're looking, Oh, it says six grams of added sugars. This is simply a technical issue with the FDA because that's the amount of sugar remaining post fermentation and no additional sugar was added. And it's at a lower glycemic impact than if you were looking at sugars for a, a different type of beverage, right? So it's not an apples to apples comparison because fermentation is sophisticated. Fermentation um, bio enhances the nutrients that you're working with, and it does convert the sugar into those healthy acids. But that's really difficult to reflect on a label that doesn't that isn't able to take that into account. You know, I think the other problem, Hannah, is that you know, your kombucha, how you make it, and we'll talk about that, is very different than if you just go to the store. There are a lot that just want to make it a tasty drink. So right. maybe it is kombucha in a sense, but then they have added a lot of extra sugar. So how do people know which one is just from the fermentation process and which one really has sugar added that they don't want to increase their glycemic index and something and actually for osteoporosis in our bones we certainly don't want to add more sugar because that reduces our calcium and our magnesium and there's just so many negative effects of sugar so so how do we know <laughs> well i think one way you know is by taste um so traditionally kombucha being an acetic acid ferment like vinegar has a little bit of a sour punch and so if what you're drinking tastes more like a soda pop, then you may not have all of those great acids present. 
Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're super sweet, but sometimes they're just lighter in profile. And while they're still delicious, they may not be delivering the same type of benefit that you're hoping for, as you would get from making it at home. And that's what's really great about making it at home. And I get it, we can't all make everything at home, right? But if you do take up kombucha as a hobby, as a lifestyle, you are in full control of that fermentation process. And you can really taste how that sweet tea changes from sweet tea into that lovely, delicious apple cidery kind of kombucha flavor. And then you get to play with tea. So tea already has a whole bunch of health benefits that are great for us. Vinegar has a bunch of health benefits, you combine those together. And that's the superpower kombucha is that nexus relationship between both of those products. And so is there a number if we see 20 grams of sugar? Is there something that would be a warning label to us if we see a certain amount of sugar that like, whoa, no. Well, it's, it's a little challenging because we also have products that aren't being labeled transparently. So for example, we have kombucha from concentrate. So this is where you ferment all the sugar out, but then you're diluting with water, you're back sweetening with a non-fermentable sugar, usually a stevia, erythritol, monk fruit, something like that. But it doesn't, you know, so it's choosing which products are right for you in that use occasion, right? We all drink pasteurized juice or juice from concentrate from time to time. But we also know that the benefit of a raw juice is going to be different from those products. However, a raw juice in your fridge after a week might taste a little funky and weird, whereas that pasteurizer from concentrate product can be there as well. And then it's also like, what's the impact of these non- fermentable sugars? Are they something you want to include in your diet as well? So this is where I just caution against only going towards like a zero sugar, because those have their own drawbacks as well. So I really our philosophy or kombucha camp is trust your gut. And that isn't trust your taste buds, although the taste buds are involved. It's really about closing that feedback loop between when you drink the kombucha, how does it make you feel afterwards? Do you feel energized? Does your gut feel more settled? Do you feel bloated? Do you feel you know, cruddy, if you feel bloated and cruddy, then maybe there's too much sugar, and that's going to aggravate any sort of dysbiosis you already have. Um, if what you're consuming and what that feedback loop is telling you is, hey, I feel energized, I feel pretty good. And yeah, I'm in the bathroom, maybe a little more than I, I'm used to, but that's because I'm moving stuff out of the way, so that everything can be, uh, my engine can run more smoothly, so to speak. Part of your motto is one helping one gut at a time. <laughs> and, and I love that. So why don't, because the gut is so important. I know everyone listening, we've had speakers on the gut, but it's critical. It's critical really for all aspects of our health. But I see that with bone health issues and osteoporosis, that when people do have issues with their gut, it significantly impacts their bone health. And so why don't you tell us how kombucha really helps our gut? What are the benefits? Yeah, absolutely. So first, I'll just say the gut is your first brain. I know we've had it backwards for a really long time. But the reality is, is when the gut is out of balance, so is this, it doesn't go the other way around. Um, and in fact, they're made from the same tissue, your gut and your brain. And so it makes sense that they're going to have a lot of neurotransmitters, a lot of, um, you know, sensory ability that's going on in the gut. And so when we think about our immune system starts right here with our mouth, that's, this is why babies are constantly putting their hands in their mouth. This is why people would eat dirt because we need soil based organisms. Now I'm not saying we should all run out and have mud pies. Um, you gotta know what, you know, hopefully there's no pesticides in your garden, things like that. But the point is, is just that as human beings, we have always had this relationship with our immune system and putting things into our body. And so the way that kombucha helps all this is it goes to the root cause. So, so much of gut dysbiosis um, you know, a lot of it is caused by over sanitization, over use of antibiotics and things like that, you know, we're starting to recognize that some of these practices that we used as a band aid actually had longer term negative effects. And so when we come back to kombucha and kombucha is just a gateway in to all kinds of fermented foods. So it's not the one thing you should consume. It's just a place to start and then get the sauerkraut, get the keeper, get the kimchi and all the other things, because what we need in our gut, as you already know, Margie is diversity. And so the more types of organisms we have from a variety of places, your body then sorts out what is right for you. And it can bring you back into that balance. So a lot of people might be thinking, all right, it can be carbonated or it's carbonated. And 
you know, why is this one good for our bones where some other carbonated drinks may not be as good for our bones? <laughs> I love this question. You know, so does our simulacrum. So simulacrum is a word that means it's pretending to be a real food, but it's not. Um, so when you're making soda, they want to mimic the acidity of fermentation. So those organic acids remineralize your body. They put minerals back into your body versus phosphoric acid, acid which extracts minerals from your body. Um, there's a natural sweetness that we want to leave in the kombucha or we're just drinking vinegar and they put sugar in the soda. There's natural effervescence because yeast is what creates those bubbles and yeast have a nutritional promise. So I truly believe that people crave bubbles because historically and in our DNA, which is potentially billions of years old, there's this transmitted wisdom that if bubbles are present, that means nutrients are present. Now that's the bait and switch, unfortunately, of the milacrum is that it's pretending to be something that it isn't, whereas fermented beverages are the original sodas. Those are the original um, beverages that had that natural effervescence, those light bubbles, they put acids into your body that didn't deplete your body, they put minerals back into your body. And so you want to avoid anything that's pretending to be um, a fermented drink and you want to drink fermented drinks. We want the real deal. And yours, Hannah, is the real deal. What about our joints? Because a lot of times if our joints are sore, people are trying to exercise and their joints are sore and achy, but kombucha can really help that. So why don't you tell us how the how that works? Yeah, absolutely. So um, so kombucha creates organic acids, specifically gluconic and glucuronic acid. And this is why the sugar as a disaccharide is so important because that fructose is important for feeding the yeast and the glucose, gluconic, glucuronic acid, right? This is where those acids come from, glucosamine, right? So kombucha has the precursors to what creates glucosamine and helps to keep the joints lubricated and healthy. Also, those acids help specifically to detoxify the liver. And as you may have had other guests talk about, the liver is really that filter through which everything goes to before it allows the nutrients into the bloodstream. And it filters out things like xenobiotics. So these could be, you know, antibiotics or different things that are coming from outside of our body. It's sequestering those. And, and what happens is it bonds to glucuronic acid. And then through hydrolysis, which is a fancy way of saying you drink water and you pee, you flush it out. <laughs> the problem is we're so overtoxified in our current environment, our livers cannot naturally keep up with the amount of glucuronic acid we need in order to keep our livers clean. What happens then is that those toxins get sequestered into your fat cells, because again, it's trying to keep it out of your body and keep you safe. And then those bioaccumulate over time. And so those organic acids in kombucha, I feel like part of why she's here and ascending right now, yet again, because she's been around for thousands of years, um, is because we're so toxic and we really need her help. But all of that is to say these organic acids also have those precursors to glucosamine. There's higher lot height. I can't pronounce this one, high hyaluronic acid. You got it. That's good. <laughs> um, and, and different acids. And now the thing to keep in mind, these are not in massive doses, right? So this isn't like, let me swap this supplement for this natural food. Although I will say the reason to do that is because in a natural food, it's in a living form. And so we all know that every acid or, you know, type of nutrient or vitamin has a chemical structure, right? We've seen the little hex grams and the little bonds that draw. Well, those are like keys. And so when you're consuming something from nature, that key fits into the lock, you can instantly uptake and utilize it. When we create those same elements in a lab, that key isn't the same shape. And so what happens is your body can't necessarily utilize those nutrients. And so even though they're present in high doses, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're able to absorb those nutrients. And we've seen with a lot of different supplements over time, that in fact, they can have the opposite effect of what they're intending because they're not in that living form. Wow. Isn't that amazing that you could drink something that tastes good and have all these health benefits as well? It's I, I love that. I love, I love easy tweaks that have so many benefits. Now, another thing though, is as a sports drink and a recovery drink, people are using kombucha. So yeah, tell so us about kombucha, that. Like pickled juice, right? So again, what we have is these are beverages that have electrolytes because they already have minerals naturally present in them. And part of 
uh, recovery isn't just hydrating. Um, we also need to have nutrients put back in. And so kombucha is really excellent as a recovery drink. It also helps to reduce the pain experienced by lactic acid buildup in the muscles. And so you're able to recover more quickly. And in fact, a lot of um, sports teams. So most kombucha brands don't have the kind of money that uh, Pepsi or Coke have. So they're not putting those massive sponsorships out there. But in the locker rooms, they're providing kombucha to the athletes because they really appreciate the benefit, but the public doesn't know about it because uh, they don't have the money to advertise for it that way. That's un. Believable. So what would you recommend in terms of when you, all right, let's say, let's say first, let's talk about sports. So, you know, to replace that lactic acid, when do you recommend that they have the kombucha? Yeah. So the great thing about kombucha because of its low pH, so it is an acidic beverage. Um, and so I know some people might be thinking, well, wait, I thought acidic beverages were bad for me. They're going to destroy my oral biome. They're going to have a negative effect. And it's because again, these are organic acids in a living form. They alkalize just like a lemon juice or a grapefruit might in your body. Well, it has that low pH. It does the opposite because it's putting the nutrients in. And so that's the beauty of kombucha. You can drink it before, during, after same with meals. Like often we don't want to over dilute our gastric juices, but again, because kombucha has that acidity, it's going to help your body to digest and break down those nutrients. Wow. So that's so interesting. So when people are starting off, what do you recommend? You know, how do you, what do you tell people? So someone who's never had kombucha before, someone who's listening and said, I'm going to try this. Now I have to tell you, it's not something that's a regular part of my diet, but after talking to you and really seeing all these health benefits, I'm adding it. I'm going to start adding your kombucha to, um, <laughs> well, I don't make a commercial brand. So unfortunately you won't be able to buy mine, but what I do is I teach people how to make it at right. home. No, no, no. That's what I'm yeah. doing. Yes, exactly. Uh, but then yeah. we also work with the trade association. So I'm president of kombucha brewers international. So I work with <laughs> anything kombucha. I'm probably there, um, is what I'm trying to say. But so here's where you want to start. You probably want to start if you're new to kombucha, start with a flavor, a fruit, a something that's approachable for you. Because a lot of people, because they're over sugarified, the first time they taste a kombucha, they might go, oh, sour face. So it can be one of these things that if you um, find a kombucha that's just too aggressive for you, there's a couple things you can do. First, we can dilute it with water. So it's just like putting that piece of ice in your glass of scotch, where as it melts, it shifts the flavor profile, makes it a little bit easier to enjoy. I don't know if you drink scotch, Margie, but I um, don't, I don't know. <laughs> anyone out there who's tried it knows what I'm talking about. But basically the water shifts the pH. So it's not as acidic. You're still getting the whole benefit of the acids, but it isn't having that same, you know, punch you in the mouth flavor profile. And that's where the evolution of a lot of softer tasting kombuchas has come about because mainstream people find that flavor can be a little intense. But that said, what the body craves is sour and bitter. Sour and bitter are the flavors of health and digestion. And what's really amazing is sour plus bitter equals sweet in your mouth. It's the weirdest thing in the world. I discovered this by accident. I was tasting some sour. At first I had digestive bitters. I was at like a, an event. So I had some digestive bitters and then the next table over was sauerkraut. And I had them back to back and all of a sudden this alchemy happened in my mouth where it was sweet in there. And I was just so surprised. But so all that said is um, like lemon in your kombucha is actually really good because you might think, oh, it's sour and sour, but it actually goes really well. So find a flavor that speaks to you. Ginger is the most popular flavor just because humans and ginger have a happy history together. It's kind of like ginger ale. So that's usually an approachable flavor profile for most. If not, find a fruity one. Um, GT's. He's the, he's the guy who started the industry, put it in a bottle first. The reason I mention him is because his brand is all over the United States and Canada and other places as well. So he's, it's an easy one to find GTs or Synergy Kombucha. It's a raw unpasteurized kombucha. It might have a little more assertiveness than what you're used to, but it's also much closer to that sort of traditional flavor profile, but he's done an excellent job creating all these yummy, different flavors. Right now, the seasonal is like unity. It's cherry, lemongrass, coconut water. It's super yummy. So you're going to find a lot of delicious combos out there. And what, sorry to like prattle on here, but um, whatever you're infusing into the kombucha, you're going to get the health benefit of that thing. And so um, kombucha becomes a carrier for nutrition, for nutrients and herbs. And so if there are herbs you're using to work with bone health, 
Um, you can infuse those into your kombucha if you're making them at home and just create elixirs and tonics that have more than just a pleasurable aspect. There is this additional nutritional value as well. Wow, this is sounding so, so wonderful. So, so you know what, Hannah, we didn't even talk about the backstory. How did you become the, the kombucha mama and the maven of kombucha? Can you just tell us how you started and how you got involved with this? Absolutely. I call it kombucha kismet. That's a word for fate. Kombucha found me. I had no clue. So most people come to kombucha because they have a health issue, some sort of ailment. They tried other things. They've heard kombucha can help, especially with gut health. And so they try it. They have this, this transformative experience. And this is how like literally every brand comes into being. They start making it. Their friends love it. They want to help their community. And that's what happens. So when I discovered kombucha, I was visiting a friend from college and his roommate was like, had these weird jars and this stuff floating in. They go, that's kombucha. I'm like, hmm, never heard of it. It looks weird. But when I came back to Los Angeles, this was in 2002, at the Whole Foods, there were just like shelf after shelf, because that's where GT's originated was in Los Angeles in 95. And I pulled one off the shelf. And again, I know most people get the sour face, but for me, it was just like, oh, and that's because I was the girl sneaking the pickle juice out of the pickle jar. Like I like salty, sour, funky flavors. And what happened though, was this physiological experience where every nerve ending in my body was electrified. I just, I felt alive. And that's because I was sad, Margie. I was standard American diet, you know, 25, half a step away from college, still eating microwave foods and processed foods. And, you know, to have something with nutrients in a living form, to have these enzymes, I just, my body was like, yes. And like a lot of people, my thirst outgrew my budget. And because I'd seen those funky jars, I'm like, I'm just going to make my own. And the lesson in all of that is I'm a terrible cook. And so if I can make kombucha, so can you, because if you can brew tea, that's really all it is. We're brewing tea. We're adding sugar. We put in what we call a SCOBY that stands for symbiotic culture, bacteria and yeast. It's a rubbery disc. Uh, looks kind of like a pancake or the moon. <laughs> um, and we put that into the brew with some starter liquid and we leave it alone for about a week. Um, depending on how sweet or tangy you want your flavor profile, you can extend or shorten that time frame. We flavor it, we drink it, we start the process over again. So it, it really is a lovely way to enjoy reconnecting with nature, reconnecting with slowing down, reconnecting with process, reconnecting with what you put in, what you, what you reap is what you'll sow. Um, you end up having this relationship. So I, I consider it a cross between a pet and a plant. So it's <laughs> not going to come snuggle with you in bed, thankfully, <laughs> but it does require some care. But that relationship that people have with their scobies becomes very nurturing. And I really, truly believe that, you know, as you exchange bacterial information with your ferments, you create your own microbiome in your home, you, your force field, right, we have a microbiome floating around us that can leave a detectable print like a fingerprint when we exit. So I don't know if people are aware of that, but we're kind of like pig pen from the peanuts, where we literally have a microbial cloud around us. And so the more you're inviting bacteria into your life, I just feel like your body is going to be so supported. And that's because this, this terrain needs to be super healthy, just like the terrain when we plant foods so that, so that those can be um, nutritious as well. Wow. You know, it's so interesting because all of the research, all the research on bone health, all the research really on ev really everything, whether it's gut health, whether it's the brain, whether it's so many different disease states, what they're finding is that the key, the absolute key is the diversity of the microbiome. So adding these nutrients and adding this good bacteria and all the, everything that you're getting is just a win-win for, for so much. Have you, what have you, what have you seen then with all the people mm -hmm. that you, you know, I want to hear about your class because that sounds so interesting, but what have you seen with people? Like what have been the physical results besides just you what have you seen with the people that you've been working with woman like this is I think part of why people put up with the blood sweat and tears because I call brewing kombucha labor of love emphasis on the labor it's a lot of heavy lifting it's a challenging um, industry to go into but the reason people do it is because at the farmer's market at you know when they're sampling out their goods when they're in their tap room people are coming in and saying 
I stopped taking my heart, my heartburn medication, I was able to reduce my insulin dependence, I'm able to, you know, you know, Terry Walls, Dr. Terry Walls, who recovered herself from MS. Now, kombucha wasn't the only thing, but it was one of the tools she used. I mean, people have- Oh, that's so, I, it's so interesting because I interviewed, she's, yeah. she's been on the podcast and she's just so inspirational. I didn't know that that, that kombucha was one of her tools. How interesting. Mm. Yeah. So fermented foods and kombucha, one of them. And um, so again, none of this is to say kombucha is the end. Kombucha is the beginning. It's a gateway into- all of these wonderful fermented foods, which all have their own different properties and aspects. And that's why we don't just want kombucha in our life. So that's a great place to start. We want, we want to diversify, we want to incorporate so many of these different things. And this is also why I say a hug or a handshake, because I'm going to get your bacteria one way or another, because I know that taking on your bacteria is only going to make my force feel that much stronger. Wow. So tell us about your course. Like, how do you even start, you know, when this is foreign to people and they're just used to maybe going into Whole Foods and grabbing kombucha? You know, where do you start with people? How, how does it work? Because I know you have one coming up very I soon. Do. Actually. Yeah, I'm yeah. super excited to launch my first course. You know, ever since our book came out, The Big Book of Kombucha it came out in 2016. I have been on the road talking to people, teaching about kombucha. Well, obviously, the pandemic shifted that entire model. And finally, the thing my husband's been after me for years to do has now come to fruition. And we have an online course. So I'm super excited. We call it Kombucha Fundamentals because we're putting the fun in it. It's, um, But it is very similar to how I teach my courses, which is I have these very rich, detailed uh, PowerPoint slides. And then my fun, colorful personality sharing all of those great details. And the nice thing is, is that all the lessons, there's 10 lessons in total will be available to consume immediately. So whether you're new to kombucha or you're an old hand, or you have a specific pain point with your process, you're going to be able to pick and choose exactly the information you want. There's an entire lesson on deciphering labels. So we go into those different nuances. We go into what are all the supplies you need? How do you make it? How do you make sure it's safe? How do you make sure you're not poisoning yourself at home? Honestly, it's really hard to do. In fact, it's near impossible with kombucha. But again, when you're introducing people to something new, those are the kinds of worries and concerns that might come up. And it's all in a really simple to understand format with handouts, checklists, you know, we really load you up. As you can hear, Margie, I just I'm a I'm a gusher of information. And so I give and give and give. Um, but that's because changing the world when got at a time uh, is something we all have to do in symbiosis. And this is just my way of contributing to that process. But what a wonderful way to do it with something that you can just drink. <laughs> and I also like, you know, I, I think there's something to be said about being involved with creating it. And just, it's almost like a meditation in a sense where, you know, you're thinking about that. You're not focusing on all the crazy things going in the world. And when you do that, that's what I've seen. When you become present in whatever activity you're doing, which this could become, you just get absorbed in it and it's it's a win-win situation. So I see that there's so many benefits besides just like, oh, I have to do this because this is a healthy drink. It's not right. that way at all. And I can hear the enthusiasm in what you're saying. And oh my gosh, I'm ready to take this this second. And I'm... <laughs> <laughs> well, we it's going to be available soon. So it, it launches October 10th, but we are doing a promo period. So everyone's going to have an opportunity to get excited about it to start to get their supplies ready. And um, so it's just going to be a lot of fun uh, when it launches. But in the meantime, everybody can go and check out that information on the Kabucha Camp website. And I think you're going to share a link for them. So yes, yes, I'll give them a link. Wow. This and is actually, I'm doing the course. So um, it's not being hosted on the kombucha campsite. I am partnering with amazing women in fermentation called fermentation school. So my dear friend, Kirsten Christopher Shockey, who wrote fermented vegetables, hot sauce, miso, like they have written, I think, five to 10 books all on fermentation. And they're absolutely lovely people. And Meredith Lee, who does fermented meats. So she does butchery and charcuterie and things like that. And they're also onboarding other amazing uh, female teachers, it's women led um, from around the globe to, to share these arts of fermentation. So I'm super excited to be partnering with Fermentation School on this. They have such great offerings and I'm just um, excited to, to work with them as well. 
Oh, so you mean people besides the kombucha, they're going to learn other ways to add fermentation? Well, there are other courses available. So oh, I said, great. Yeah. So then you pick and choose which courses you want. But the nice thing is, is the forum is for everybody. So even if you aren't in the MISO class, you might peek in in the MISO forum and see what they're talking about in there. Um, and then, of course, we'll have the kombucha forum where everyone will be talking about that. And here at Kombucha Camp, we do kombucha. We do jun, which is kombucha's raw honey cousin usually made with green tea. It's a little lighter and people, some people really love that honey flavor. Oh, and wait, wait, start again. What do you, what do you put that on? Or how do you, I've never had that. How do you Yeah, so it's it? a beverage like kombucha. So it's fermented in the same way. It's just instead of sugar, we use raw honey. Oh. Which is a lovely ingredient, but it definitely costs a lot more than the sugar. <laughs> Got it. So, but it had, but it is its own sort of category of kombucha and you can purchase it commercially. It's just a smaller segment because again, it's just a more specialty item. But then we also have, because we're bacteria farmers, we do milk kefir and water kefir. So for folks who maybe have tried kombucha and you're like, ah, I just can't do it. It's a little too intense for me. Water kefir can be a really great option to go with. It's sweeter, it's lighter. Now it's not an acetic acid ferment. It's more of a lacto ferment, although there's other organisms in there as well. Um, so, you know, it's kind of choose your own adventure when it comes to fermentation. And there is a ferment for everybody's flavor profile. Wow. This is so, so interesting. It's a whole nother world of health, right? Health and so you're like getting into your gut. Like your whole gut is this whole you know, we didn't understand the microbiome. Isn't this so wild, Margie? Do you know the timeline on this? It was first, it was the human genome project, right? In the 90s, they were like, we're going to understand the genome. So then we can apply all these gene therapies. Well, what they realized is they could not finish the genome project until they understood the role of bacteria. And while they'd known that bacteria were in our bodies for a long time, they didn't understand the role. And that is what directly led into the human microbiome project. And so I want to say, is it is it only a decade? It's been around since 2000 or 2010. I can't remember exactly the timeline, but it's such a small sliver of time that we've even been paying attention to the microbiome. And yet, as you've alluded to many times, it's the biggest piece of the puzzle. Um, and so I think that the, and this is why, like, the more we really envision our bodies as a temple that, that needs sacred divine nourishment, however that works for you. And, and to your point, intentionality or consecrating what you're consuming or putting your love energy when you're cooking something, we can't always afford the best ingredients all the time. But even just putting that energy, that intentionality into what we're preparing makes our food more nutritious, right? Because there's a there's an energy to it that allows our bodies to, um, to thrive in a way, whereas if we're just throwing something in a you know, a pre-processed thing and a here over there where we're not really paying attention to what we're doing. We're pressing a few buttons on a microwave and then we're eating, standing up and rushing out the door. Like that lack of intentionality is part of the lack of nutrients, right? We really it's need It's so that. true. It's the body yeah. interprets that as stress. And it's funny as a physical therapist, way back. <laughs> That's what I used to do. You know, you had to shove the food in as fast as physically possible to get to your next patient. And at the time I wasn't realizing that that was increasing cortisol, you know, increasing the stress hormone because your body interprets that, that, you know, you're under stress, let's shut down digestion. Mm -hmm. And, and also cortisol has a negative effect on the bones. It actually reduces the osteoblast, the bone building cells. So it all works together, slowing down, you know, enjoying your food and creating it. And I think the thing is a lot of, you know, we realize how important the microbiome and a lot of people think, okay, because probiotics, there are certain strains that have actually shown to increase bone density. So people think, okay, I'll just take that. And yes, that's good. But this is even going another step and adding more diversity and adding, you know, other well, cultures. That's exactly right. Because I think, again, we've been so trained to like, what's the one pill? What's the one magic solution? Well, the reality is it's never won anything because it wasn't one fast food meal that got you to where you are, right? It's that accumulation over time. And while I think probiotics are really important, especially because we're so depleted as a society, we also don't want to get caught up eating the exact same probiotic in every packet of chips and yogurt drink and right. And so that's where again, we still always have to be those label investigators, because if 
And you'll even find them in kombucha. They're putting, you know, probiotics and stuff in there as well, in addition to what's already naturally present. And so I get concerned that there's an over pharmaceuticalization of the word probiotics and, um, and how they want to define them and patent them. And, you know, and it's good to test things and understand how they work in the body. But the reality is ancient man has understood forever. <laughs> when you eat food from the earth, when you're in harmony with the earth, you're, you're going to feel healthier and just feel better. Right. And, um, you know, you know, the best thing you started off the conversation saying this, that you have to go inward. And so often we're not so often we are so removed from our bodies. But I think what you said was so important in the beginning that go inward. How does it make you feel? And I think it's so very important when you have this, wow, do I feel expanded? Do I feel good? My bowel movements are better. Oh, this is interesting. I don't have the constipation or I'm just feeling happier because, you know, I teach happiness, but God is related to happiness as well. And so it's so interesting. So that's sort of my challenge as well. Try all these things, try it. And you can just, as you said, you know, you don't have to instantly enroll, but you could try one of the, the brands that you recommended, you know, and just see how it makes you feel. And then if you want to go that next step and start creating it yourself and feeling that partnership, then we have this amazing course that you've created. But I think the key is sit back and test it. You're your own. I, I think we're our own best experiment. And we need to just sort of, you know, it's great when everybody says, oh yeah, this is great for your gut, or this is great. But but stop, see what it does for you. And I think, and I, and I think that's fun also when you realize that, wow, you know, it, I can really make a difference in my health. As you said, one gut at a time, but even drinking something that's healthy with so many minerals and, and, you know, and, and, and we're, 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 nobody knows what's going on in your body like you do. It doesn't matter how many times you talk about symptoms or this or that to someone else. Nobody can feel exactly what's going on and your body communicates to you. And, you know, I'm really grateful and this is slightly off topic, but I'm really grateful that so much recognition around trauma and how that stays stored in our bodies. And it can even be generational, not just in terms of cycles playing out in families, but passed down through our genes via epigenetics. But epigenetics also gives us this opportunity of, hey, we can change our DNA expression based on how we choose our lifestyle. And so literally stress, stress is the killer, dis-ease. And stress can come from a poor diet, from unhealthy lifestyle habits, not enough sleep, right? So there's lots of ways stress comes into our life. But anything we do to try to balance us in kombucha is an adaptogen. So there have been, uh, they did some studies at uh, University of Texas Christian, um, where they were showing that people were given sort of a, a standard stress test. And if they had the kombucha first, it wasn't that their body didn't have a stress response, but they didn't feel it. And so I think that's really important because, um, because it shows that then there's a balancing effect there, right? It's not it's the straw that breaks the camel's back. You can, your body is resilient and it can handle stress and we need stress in order for us to grow and evolve and change. It's when that stress is out of balance that that's when our bodies go out of balance. So kombucha can really help maintain that balance. And so I always say, drink kombucha and keep calm. You don't do it the other way around. You got to drink the kombucha first and then you can keep calm because that's what's going to help alleviate the stress in your life. But that's so important because... We all have, I mean, look at what the times we're living in right now. It's stressful. There's no question. So it's not that stress, but what can we do so that we can ride those waves? And we want every tool we can possibly have. And an adaptogen is so amazing because it helps balance wherever we're at. It balances us, which I'm always amazed at that, that it can work both ways. And it just, it, you know, it has so many amazing properties, but I think that that's, you know, look, we want every tool we can possibly have. And I, I'm just so grateful for you to introduce us to this. And I know when I met you, I was really excited because you're doing it the right way, you know, and you, you know, and, and it's, it's something that's just a win-win, but as, as we say, try it, don't take anybody's word for it and just, um, see what it can do. Yeah, so is there any script, trust your gut. Exactly. And the yes. course is going to help demystify the whole process. It's going to give you the confidence you need. You're going to know exactly how to execute the processes, but like a recipe, right? The first batch may not be perfect. 
but that's just where experience comes into play. So all of these are processes. And to your point earlier, the more we're engaged in these processes, the more like ritual, the more grounded, the more um, present we are there that just creates and it's like a meditation, right? Like you said, it's like a moving meditation. We show that in the Kombu Cha Cha Cha. So that's the, the last video where I'm demonstrating my process of both harvesting and starting the next batch at the same time and sort of how I flow in between this and that. And, um, and yeah, so that's, that's. And if people are doing the class and they have questions, how does that work? You know, well, the, yeah. I'll... So um, if they're signing up during the promo period before October 10th, we're offering a free webinar that's going to take place a couple weeks later. So that gives you some time to get into the course. But the reality is at Kombucha Camp, we answer every question that comes our way. So um, anyone can go to Kombucha Camp, Camp with a K, and um, we'll have a link for them to from you as well. Um, you can sign up for our free ebook. It's an email a day for five days, but it literally just walks you through so much of what I've talked about here, breaks it down, gives you references and studies and different things. So, um, so you really start to get like we've been givers of knowledge for a long time like we put so much information out there um but you know anywhere you want to start with us that that's great and then the course is just going to you know make it super easy to understand and digest all of it wow hannah i'm really excited because we've i've known hannah and i know each other and i i've known about this when you were starting the class so it's so nice i mean look at one of the benefits of the pandemic right it's like caused us to do some things that we may not have done that that's fantastic so i'm just really excited about this class and i i think oh boy you've really motivated me to start adding more of this to my diet <laughs> so i'm very excited is there any last minute things before we end you've, you've really given us so much great information oh my gosh um uh mostly i would just say give it a try because you don't know until you try if it's going to be something that works or resonates for you. And even if you feel like the first time wasn't the greatest experience, try again. And if you have a farmer's market, go talk to your local producer. They are going to have so much information and passion to share with you. And, um, you know, there really is a whole element of connection and community. I could go into more of that about bacteria and bacterial sapiens, but we'll, we'll pause here for now and um, just really grateful to connect with you, Margie, and your audience. And I hope that um, people will give kombucha a try. Wow. I mean, you are just so enthusiastic. I feel it. I, I mean, there's the energy right now is palpable. I'm just, I, I can't even get over it. Anna. <laughs> so I am so excited. Thank you so much for sharing all this information with you. And I'm very excited about your class. So thanks so much. Thank you, Margie. I hope you enjoyed my interview with Hannah and now have a better understanding of what kombucha is and all the health benefits that go along with it. All the links that Hannah talked about will be in the show notes, including the link to her exciting new course. So thank you so much for being here and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode.